We're going to be welcoming that brand new decade, that brand new year. You know, this, uh, in case you didn't know, this is the last teen year that any of us are ever going to see in our lifetime. And we are in the last hour of the last teen year that any of us will ever, ever experience. Unless if you plan on living uh, about 120 years or something like that, you never know. You know how amazing is that? I still remember uh, when, twin, when I was a young boy and 2020 was like, you know, something so far away. You know, it's going to happen one day. You know, uh, Mahade in 1981, in 1991, he released his Wawa Sun, Do Aplo, Do Aplo. If, if you can remember the song, how many of you can remember the song? Wawa Sun, Do Aplo, Do Aplo, Satu Pandangan Jawa. Here we are, guys. Wawa San, Duoplo, Duoplo. By then, you know, uh, at that point, right, I think about 28 years ago, they envisioned that by the year 2020, Malaysia is going to be a fully industrialized nation. And Mahade launched it. You know, they have songs, logos, and you know, what uh, ideas of what the future is going to look like. And here we are entering into 2020, and Mahade is still leading the country. <laughs> How funny is that? His vision, and he's here to see how it failed miserably. Anyway, so... <laughs> wow. You know, I always like to check on what people are saying about the new decade. And as expected, like every year, before this, there are predictions of doom and gloom and, you know, uh, and uh, economic collapse and... Uh, uh, political upheaval, natural catastrophes, uh, a meteor is going to, this decade we're going to see a meteor crash into the earth. You know, nothing new, nothing new, same thing we hear about every year and probably every, every decade. But uh, like every year before, we need to know that 2020 will bring with it the good, the bad, the ugly. We will be exposed to all of that. And I don't think any one of us here can say that that 2019 was all good. And I don't think we can say that 2019 was all bad either. So we had a bit of everything, right? Uh, there were good times, there were great times, there were bad times, there were, there were sad times. It's always a mix. It's always a mix. You know, it's like a nice plate of biryani. <laughs> you see, biryani is generally good. It's generally delicious. But in the biryani are those seeds. <laughs> what do you call the seeds, huh? That, that cardamom. Why on earth would they put it in a biryani? You know, you're enjoying this great biryani and then all of a sudden you unknowingly just bite on one of these cardamom seeds. And it's horrible. It ruins your biryani experience and your, your biryani moment. And, then, and the whole deliciousness of the biryani is overshadowed by this one seed that you accidentally put in your mouth. What the heck is it doing in a biryani? <laughs> but then you don't judge the biryani by that one moment, right? You don't throw away the biryani because of the seed. You continue to enjoy it. And, you know, and you give a review of the biryani. You don't take into consideration the cardamom that you accidentally uh, bit but you give a good review of the biryani. In fact, they say that seed, the cardamom seed is absolutely necessary. As horrible as it tastes, it actually is supposed to contribute to the great taste of the biryani. So if you ask me about my 2019, I'll say my 2019 was a biryani. <laughs> there were those bitter moments, and I'm sure all of us had those moments. Uh, but generally, when I look back, I see the goodness and faithfulness of God throughout, throughout every step of the way. Yes, there were bitter moments. I know some of those moments were necessary sometimes. Uh, sometimes God allows those moments and He works through these moments and to bring about a greater good and uh, to bring about His purposes and His plans for our lives and for our future and for our church. And um, 
So there's always a lot of emotions uh, when I, I feel when I stand at the brink of a new year. I, I don't know about you, but I always enter the new year with a lot of mixed feelings. You know, there's no one feeling that uh, I, can, I can use to describe. You know, it's not, it's not just joy. It's not, it's not just nervousness. It's not only positivity and excitement. You know, it's a mix, a bit of everything. You know, you're, you're happy, you're excited, you're, you're positive, you're nervous, you're worried, you're expectant. You know, it's a whole lot of things. But I guess one question that we all will have at the back of our mind is, what will this new year bring? What will 2020 be like or bring into our world? Are there three Ethans sitting in a row there? <laughs> Ethan, Ethan, Ethan. Lucky the other Ethan isn't there. We have four Ethans. When I named my son Ethan, I thought it was the most unique <laughs> name because there was no Ethans around me. I never knew any Ethans, so I thought I'm going to name my first son Ethan. You know, it's a cool name. Then we plant the church. There's two Ethans in church, plus him is three. And then Ethan goes to school, and he has a best friend. Guess what's his name? <laughs> Ethan. Then my insurance agent has a son about the same time, and he tells me, hey, I'm naming my son Ethan also. So, that was just a diversion from, listen, just don't name your kids Ethan. So now there's three Ethan sitting in a row, Ethan from school, Ethan my son, and Ethan from church. <laughs> Where was I? Before I was interrupted by the Ethans. You know, there are things that we know about 2020. We know it's going to be the election year for America. Uh, Trump's going to get another term as president. see a lot of Republicans in the house here, so anyway. <laughs> we know what the news will tell us about next year, you know, what the economic and uh, political experts say, what some prophets are saying, you know, I went through, I was listening to different stuff, and, uh, and there actually are quite a few articles on what to expect in the new decade, and as you know, it's the usual, like I said, the doom and gloom stuff, there's some good stuff as far, uh, as, far as technology is uh, concerned, they say it's gonna, that this next decade is just going to see technology go to another level, artificial intelligence and all those kind of things, but there were a lot of experts' opinions, and, and the experts are not always right. In fact, they get it wrong most of the time. Uh, regardless of what the experts can reveal to us about our year ahead, I can assure you it will bring with it its share of shocks. Uh, no matter what we read up about the year, no matter what we know and what we find out, we will still be surprised by some of the things that are going to happen in 2020. We will still be blindsided by some things, things uh, that we never expect to happen may happen. And I'm sure most of you can look back to this year and you'll realize you've had your fair share of the unexpected of course, uh, there were good things that happened unexpectedly, you know, uh, some new jobs, new relationships, you know, on the plus side, some of you found a partner and got married all in a few months in one year. That was totally unexpected, blindsided all of us. But on the flip side, you know, some of us suffered losses that we never expected the year to bring. Uh, some of us, it's the loss of a loved one. You know, we, we know we said a reluctant goodbye to, uh, to our Sumadhi this year. Totally didn't expect it. Uh, we lost Uncle Tom as well. You know, some of us lost uh, friends and family members. You know, uh, I lost a good friend and a, a ministry partner, Anthony Shalala. Most of you know him, who just, just got a heart attack and just didn't wake up uh, the, the next morning. And... Uh, so, so we, we've got, we, some of us got negative news that we never expected to hear this year. But no matter how we, so no matter how we prepare ourselves, every year will bring with it its share of surprises. Things that will fall outside our scope of influence, outside our expectations, outside our ability to, to know in advance the uncertainties, and, and, and 2020 will be the same. 
You know, sometimes when we pray about the new year, we sort of have a wish list that we give to God, things that we want to see God do for us uh, for this year. You know, this year, Lord, give me a better job, a higher income. God, let help me to see victory over this weakness in my life. Lord, please heal me. You know, this year I want to be healed. Uh, oh, Lord, this year I want to see my children turn to you. Lord, this year I want to see breakthrough come into my life. But today, as we are preparing to go into the new year, listen, don't go into 2020 with a wish list. Go into 2020 with a no list. Because your victory over this coming year and all the things that it will bring will, be, will not be driven by what you wish for. It will be driven by what you know is. There's a popular saying, knowledge is power, and that is so true. God says uh, in Hosea, we know that scripture, Hosea chapter 4 verse 6, He says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. In fact, God, uh, this year God's been speaking to me about a season that He wants me to embrace. Uh, it's not about more effort, but it's about more awareness. He wants us to move from greater effort to greater awareness. And it, you know, it seems uh, like a very simple task, but it is no easy task for me. To walk in greater awareness is to walk in knowledge, in knowing certain realities, not just a head knowledge, but a revelation of certain important truths. And I believe that God wants us as a church, as His people, to have to walk in a greater awareness of all that He has done for us. To move from greater effort, from striving to greater awareness, knowing, because that's where the power lies. Amen. That's where your victory will come from. We don't have... Let's, let me just jump a couple of verses here. You see, we don't have knowledge of what the economy will be like in 2020. We don't have knowledge of how the government will behave. We don't have knowledge of how the stock markets will perform, you know, that there's knowledge that we do not have access to. But the knowledge that we do have access to is more than enough to carry us, to, carry us through 2020, into the new year, into the new decade. The key to you seeing 2020 become that year where you see all God's promises fulfilled for your lives is this key called faith. Uh, we all know what faith is. I mean, it's, it's a common word in, in Christian circles. But the funny thing about faith is this. Faith is not driven by faith. Faith is driven by knowledge, by what you know. Romans chapter 10 verse 17 says, Faith comes by, by hearing and hearing by the word of God. It doesn't even say faith comes by prayer. In fact, it says Prayer is driven by faith, and faith comes through what you hear, and what you hear becomes what you know. Your knowledge and your, what you know builds up your faith. What you know will cause you to believe, to have faith, and you pray because of what you believe. In Philemon verse 6, it says, Paul writes, he says this, that the fellowship of your faith may become effective that the fellowship of your faith may become effective through the knowledge of every good thing which is in you for Christ's sake. That your faith will become effective. How does your faith become effective? Through the knowledge of every good thing which is in you for Christ's sake. Knowledge. Your key to effectiveness, your key to breakthrough, your key to victory is faith. And this faith is anchored in what we know. So we need to walk in greater knowledge, in greater awareness for this new year. Because that's where our victory lies. And these are some of the things that you need to hear and know as you enter into 2020. 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 2. It says, grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. And His divine power has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of Him who called us by glory and virtue. 
Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3 says, All praise to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realms because we are united in Christ. Look at the words being used. He has given, past tense, done, already given. He has already blessed us. He has blessed us with every spiritual blessing. Listen, you're going into the new year fully equipped and blessed. You need to know that. Everything that you will need to face this year in the natural and the spiritual, you already have been given by God and because you are united with Him. There will be things that you will face in the natural and the spiritual and you need, that you need not be worried or concerned or wonder what you need to do about because you have already been given not some things, the scripture says, not a few things, but all things pertaining to life and godliness. You have been blessed with not some spiritual blessing, but it says every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realms. So it's not about asking or wondering, it's about knowing who you are and knowing what you already have, what Jesus Christ has already given you through His finished work at the cross. It's about walking in that awareness into a brand new decade, knowing that you have all that you need to face the year and all that it brings. Amen? You know, when we went for that... uh, First Orang Asli trip all those years ago, I've shared this story before to this, to, uh, to this village in Pera. You know, uh, we went to just do a medical camp and we wanted to get in and out in a few hours and, you know, we'd be done. Uh, we did our ministry, we did the clinic, we did the haircuts and we decided to leave after things were done. And as we began to head down, it's like a, you know, a two or four, two hour drive up the mountains on a good day. But as we began to head down, it started to rain. And it was all good. We were all excited because we were all in our trucks and, you know, we thought, okay, it's cool. Got some, some uh, four-by-four off-road action that's going to be happen, happening. And, you know, we, but as we were driving down, all of a sudden, the, the, the ground beneath us started becoming like cake. And our trucks were not ro- going, the, the tires didn't need to turn. The trucks were just like sliding down the hill. And on one side, is like a massive drop. On the other side is the hill. And it took us like two hours to get about 100 meters. And we were all starting to, okay, it's going to get dark. And then the, 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 the Orang Asli people uh, care, who were trying to help us get out the mountain because it's a two-hour drive. And this one, it was already like six something. And they were saying, listen, you guys need to get out of here before it, turns, before it gets dark. Because once it gets dark, the elephants will come out and they will walk along the pathway. And if your cars and your trucks are in the pathway, when the elephants come out, the elephants will just push you off the cliff. So we were like, so okay, no, we got to get out of here. We got, because we were totally not prepared to, to spend a night there or anything of that sort. And we were trying and we were trying and we were trying and it started to get dark. And then after just so much of sweat and mud and blood and all kinds of things, we decided, listen, we just got to take the advice of the Orang Asli people and go back up to the village and spend the night there because there's no way we're getting out of this place uh, before dark. So we ended up going back to the village, staying the night there. Uh, we were not prepared for this, needless to say, we had no spare clothing, we had no sleeping bags, we had no blankets, we were soaked to the bone, totally unprepared for what had happened. But of course, God orchestrated some powerful thing in all of uh, that happened. And, you know, we ended up adopting that village eventually. And now we go back uh, uh, for, we go about three or four times a year up to that village. But we learned, we were unequipped to face what, was a, what we faced at that point. But we learned. And, and these days when we go, we go fully equipped with everything, we've got tow cables, we've got mud tires, we've got all, we've, all of us changed our tires to all terrain tires, we've got blankets, we've got sleeping bags, shampoos, towels, wet wipes. Listen, the most important thing in the world wet wipes. <laughs> I don't know how we used to live without wet wipes those days. We've got wet wipes, and then, you know, if you're working, we apply for that additional day off, you name it. We are equipped for everything expected 
or unexpected that that trip can bring our way. So nothing is going to leave us or find us in a place of unpreparedness, if that's a word. Now, the reason why I share that story is because I want to bring this point home. You need to know that as you go into 2020, God has equipped you for everything that this year will bring. The expected, the unexpected, you're not going to face anything that you are ill-equipped to face. It may be unexpected, but you are not ill-equipped to face it. He has given you everything pertaining to life and godliness. He has blessed you with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realms. You are ready to take on the new decade. If you are facing it, you have what it takes to overcome, to emerge victorious. There's nothing that you are going to face next year that you do not have the God-given ability or power to overcome, that you cannot have victory over. There is no challenge or problem that is going to come your way that is going to be too great, too powerful, too overwhelming, or beyond your ability to cross over it. If you're facing it, it's only because you have what it takes to overcome it. Amen? Because if you don't have what it takes to overcome it, God will not lead you to it. Remember when God brought the Israelites out of, the, out of Egypt, he, did, he brought them a long way. He wanted them to avoid certain battles, certain enemies, because at that point, they were not ready to face the enemies. So God won't allow His people to face something that they cannot overcome. Amen? So if you're facing it, that means you have what it takes to overcome. The scripture says he would not test you beyond your ability to overcome. Amen? You can. You have what it takes to overcome. Just tap the person next to you and say, you can do it. You're going to overcome. The scripture says in Romans chapter 8, verse 11, it says, the Spirit of God who raised Jesus from the dead lives in you. I mean, that's a powerful, powerful truth. If you think about it, if you, if you, if you let it move from your head to your heart, move from head knowledge to revelation knowledge, the Spirit of God that raised Jesus from the dead lives on the inside of you. How powerful is that reality? The spirit that caused Jesus to overcome death is the same spirit that is in you. If you have, if you have death-defeating power on the inside of you, then you will definitely have the power to overcome, to defeat that situation, that financial struggle, that health problem, that relational mountain, all that you have the ability to overcome. You need to face 2020 knowing, yes, 2020 will bring, the world will bring some challenges, but greater is he who is in me than he that is in the world. In fact, if you are here today, it's because you are already an overcomer. Some of you have faced incredible challenges in 2019, incredible challenges this year. But the very fact that you are here today is because you overcame. Amen? Because you overcame. You're an overcomer. Tap the person next to you and say, you're an overcomer. That's why you're here. Amen? We were created to be overcomers. When, when God created Adam and Eve, He says he told them, fill the earth and subdue the earth. If you study the meaning of subdue, subdue means to overcome, to dominate, to be on top of things. Amen? We were created to be overcomers. That's part of our nature that God gives. And, and the scripture says, Jesus says, he who is born of God, they who are born of God overcomes the world. So we are overcomers. Some of the things that you need to be aware of as you go into 2020, you're an overcomer. You have power over the enemy and his devices. In Luke chapter 10, verse 19, here's another past tense something that God has already done. Behold, I have given you. It's not that I'm going to give you one day, if you pray enough, if you fast enough. He says, I have given you authority and power to trample on serpents and scorpions. And, and, and this is how the, the Amplified Version says it. And physical and mental strength and ability over all the power that the enemy possesses, nothing shall in any way harm you. You have within you the power and the authority over all the power that the enemy possesses. Some of you are worried over what the devil might do next year, but you need, but you need to know that the devil is worried about what you're going to do next year. Come on. 
You have power and authority over the enemy and all of his devices, all of his plans. You see, authority is legal right and power is the strength to enforce. You see, the police doesn't just have authority over me, they have the strength to enforce that authority over me. They have authority and power over me. That, may, that basically means that I cannot and should not mess around with the police. I've tried that before and it doesn't, doesn't work out fine. Let me tell you, don't try that. If I cross certain boundaries that I'm not legally allowed to cross, they can and they will exercise their authority and power over me. You see, Jesus Christ has given you power and authority over the enemy, over all of his de uh, devices. There is a boundary around, around your life. Uh, you, have, you're, you have been paid for with a price, which is the precious blood of Jesus. You have been marked by the Spirit of God. You are a citizen of the kingdom. The enemy has no legal right in your life. He has no legal right over your finances over your family, over your territory, if he's been running around in your life creating havoc, if he's, he's been doing that illegally, if he's been camping in certain parts and certain areas of your life, he's been doing that as an illegal squatter, he has no right to be there and because he's an illegal squatter, you have authority over him and you have a right to evict him from your life. If he's there, the only reason he's there is because you're allowing him to be there. Because you're tolerating him. Whatever you tolerate, you empower. You're empowering the enemy in your life. Maybe to your wrong beliefs. Another reason why he's there is maybe you don't realize that you have power over him. You need to walk in the awareness that you have power over the enemy. There's nothing that the enemy can do to you next year that you cannot have victory over and power over. And this is a powerful truth that you, that you need to be aware of as you enter the new year. You're not entering 2020 as a weak victim. You're entering 2020 as an overcomer bestowed with power and authority from God himself. The enemy and his devices has to obey the one to whom God has given power and authority to. That's you. Start exercising your authority. I don't know what the enemy will do next year, what he'll bring your way next year, what he's going to bring my way next year, but I know that he has given me power and authority over the enemy and all his devices, and I'm going to exercise my authority over the devil. I'm going to evict him from areas of my life, and some of us need to start stepping and walking in that authority over areas of your life. The enemy has been sitting in certain areas of your life, sitting in certain, certain uh, uh, domains of your, your family. You need to evict him. You need to get home, and you need to command him in the name of Jesus, devil, I bind and break your power. You have no right to be here. Get your hands off my finances. Get your hands off my children. They belong to me. They don't belong to you. We belong to Jesus. In Jesus' name, I break your power. We need to exercise that authority and evict the enemy from our lives. Amen? Come and give Jesus a clap offering. Another thing that you need to be aware of as you enter into the new year. You know, one of the things that we all pray for is more blessing in the area of finances. We want to see, we, want, we all want to see financial breakthrough. We want to be in a better place financially next year. And here's something else that you need to know that God has given you. Deuteronomy chapter 8 verse 18, it says, Remember that God, your God, gave you, past tense, gave you, done deal, gave you the strength to produce Wealth. Amen? As you go into the new year, you need to know that you have what it takes to see your financial situation change or go to the next level. God has already given you the power to produce wealth. You know, many people pray for God to, to bless them, to change their financial situation, and you pray, and you pray, and you pray, and you pray, and you ask God, God bless my finances, and the days go by, and the months go by, but nothing seems to change. And let me let you in on something. Typically, this is how God works. Typically, God doesn't bless you with wealth. He blesses you with the power to produce wealth. The scripture says he will bless whatever you stretch your hands to do. He will bless your bread basket. He'll bless the increase of your flock, which pretty much means you have to have those things in action. You need to be doing those things. You need to have a bread basket for him to bless it. 
Amen? He has given you the power to produce wealth. So the potential for change in your financial situation is already within you. You have within you the ideas, the capacity for work, the resilience to step into realms that will lead you to the transformation that you need to see happen in your financial situation. You have within you the faith capacity to trust God's word and do the necessary for your financial breakthrough. God has given you the strength to produce wealth. I don't know if 2020 will be a good year economically, but I know that even if it isn't, you are entering this year with the power to produce wealth that has been given to you by God Himself, already given. Walk with that awareness as you walk through the year. You see, Isaac sowed in the land in a time of famine. It says in Genesis chapter 26, verse 12, it says, Isaac sowed seeds in the land and received in that same year a hundred times as much as he had planted. The Lord favored him with blessings and the man became great and gained more and more until he became very wealthy and distinguished. You see, it wasn't the economy that caused Isaac to be blessed. It wasn't the natural circumstances that made him prosperous. All those factors were not in his favor. But it was his focus and trust in God's word that gave him the power to produce wealth, even in a time of famine. Psalm 65, you know, we always hear this scripture uh, being uh, pronounced during New Year's. It says, you crown the year with a bountiful harvest, even the hard pathways overflow with abundance. God has already crowned your year with goodness, with blessings. He has already crowned your year with a bountiful harvest. He's already done that. And it says even the hard pathways will overflow with abundance. That means even in those difficult points, there are blessings even in the hard points of your life. Even in the hard areas of the year, even the hard times of the year, God has put blessings in those hard times that is designed to favor you. Amen? He's already placed blessings into your year, even in the hard pathways. The power is already within you as you enter 2020. You are only limited by the limitations that you place on yourself. You know, do not let fear hold you back for another year. You don't have to go through another year struggling with lack. You have within you the power. God has given you the power to produce wealth. What are you going to do with the power that He has placed in your hands? What are you going to do with the favor that He has placed upon your life? What are you going to do? You need to walk with that awareness and step out in faith and trust God to bring blessings into your life as you lay your hands to the plow. Amen? Some other things that you need to be aware of as you enter 2020. You are going into 2020 with the assurance of blessings over your children. In Isaiah chapter 54, verse 13, it says, All your children shall be taught by the Lord, and great shall be the peace of your children. Psalms 112, verse 1, it says, How joyful are those who fear the Lord and delight in obeying His commands. Their children will be successful everywhere. An entire generation of godly people will be blessed. Your children shall be, not your children may be, your children shall be, they will be blessed. Regardless of where they are now, there is a certainty that as you are entering into 2020, you are entering with the assurance that your children are in God's hands. God will take care of them. They will be blessed. Great will be their peace. Listen, do what you can do and leave the rest to God. Be aware that God is at work even when you are not working. Not just your children. Some of you are, are praying for your family members, you know, to embrace Christ. It's stressing you out. Listen, it's time to move from, from wrestling and striving to knowing that you and your household will be saved. Amen? Amen. Knowing. It's like going into the, into the ring knowing that you've already won the fight. Sometimes it's a bit of a struggle. It's, it's like Liverpool. It's like Liverpool playing the matches now. They play, no matter how difficult the match is, they play with a smile and stuff because they know they've already won the league. Amen? And all the Manchester United fans said, Amen. I heard some no man here. Amen. 
And that's how we're supposed to live life. Yes, there will be challenges. Yeah, there will be some difficult moments. But we face those challenges knowing that the victory has already been won. Yes, you can say whatever you want against me right now. You're going to be saved. You're going to be saved. Yes, they can say you can behave this way. I know. I can smile because I know God has promised in His Word that me and my household will be saved. Amen? My children will be mighty in the land. It's going to happen. Listen, some of you need to walk in that awareness over your children. Stop striving. Stop wrestling over your family members, trying to get them to church. Listen, do what you can. Love them. Show them Christ. But leave the rest to God because they will. They will come to know Him. Amen? Because God has promised that in His Word, you and your household will be saved. Amen? Walk in that awareness. Walk in the awareness that we are forgiven and whole. 1 Peter 2, verse 24. It says, Who Himself bore our sins in His own body on the tree, that we, having died to sins, might live for righteousness, by whose stripes you were healed. Psalms 102, verse 2 says, Let all that I am praise the Lord. May I never forget the good things He does for me. He forgives all my sins. He heals all my diseases. Uh, You're you're not entering into 2020 as a sinner, but you're entering into 2020 as one who is forgiven, one who is righteous. You're not trying to get healed. Jesus already took your sicknesses and diseases and sins upon Himself. It was done more than 2,000 years ago at the cross. By His stripes you were healed. He forgave all your sins and He healed all your diseases. You're not trying to become righteous. You are already the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. We need to walk with the knowledge of who we are in Christ. We are righteous. And because we are righteous, our prayers are heard. Our prayers are answered. There's nothing that stands in the way between us and God. When you come before the presence of God, God bends down to hear your cry, to hear your prayers. Amen. Because you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Amen. Walk into the new year with the awareness that He's prepared mercies for you that are new every morning. Lamentations chapter 3 verse 22 says, The Lord's love never ends. His mercy never stops. Listen, your love for Him may have ended at many times, but the scripture says here, the Lord's love never ends. His mercy never stops. We have, may, may have been unmerciful to people, but His mercy never stops. They are new every morning. Lord, your loyalty is great. Aren't we blessed that we have a God whose loyalty towards us is great? Even when we are disloyal, He is always loyal towards us. He is that friend that sticks closer than a brother. Every day, you have access to His mercy, no matter how bad you mess up, His mercy never runs out. Amen? Every day. So if the devil tries to lead you into a state of condemnation, tells you what you're doing wrong, how you're not good enough. Listen, you have mercies that are new every morning. Don't let the enemy lie to you. Walk with the awareness that you are forgiven. Amen? That you are the righteousness of God. Amen? You know, I can go on, but I want to end with this so we have time to close the night and welcome the new year properly. I think the most important reality that we need to walk in awareness of as we enter this new year is this. God is going to be with you every step of the way. You know, you're not facing this year alone. You have God Himself with you. In Hebrews chapter 13, verse 5, For He Himself has said, I will never leave you no forsake you. Romans chapter 8 verse 38, Paul was convinced. Paul had this awareness. He said, I'm convinced that nothing can ever separate us from God's love, not death, not life, neither angels, nor demons, nor our fears for today, nor our worries about tomorrow. Not even the powers of hell can separate us from God's love. No power in the sky above or in the earth below. Indeed, nothing in all creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that is revealed in Christ Jesus, our Lord. I don't know what this new year will bring, what's going to happen, but I know the one that I'm going to be going into this year with, and that makes all the difference. Amen? 
He will never leave me nor forsake me. Nothing can separate me from His love. I'm not going to face anything alone. If God is with me, if God is for me, who can be against me? You know, every time throughout uh, biblical times, you know, leaders were about to go into a new season or a battle, you know, from Moses to, to, to Joshua to some of the great kings of Israel, God would always give them this charge, you know, and go conquer, fight, take ground, and He would always say this, fear not. And He doesn't just say fear not because it's like a motivational thing to say before you do something, fear not. He says fear not, and, and He gives them a reason as to why they shouldn't fear. And his reason for saying to them these two words that are repeated so many times in Scripture is simply this. He says, fear not, for I am with you. The very fact that he was going to be with them was reason enough for them to not succumb to fear in the face of the daunting tasks that were before them or the odds that seem to be against them in battles and in different seasons. You know, today as you are going into 2020, we do not know what the year will bring. There will be things that are unexpected. But I want to confidently say to you these two words. Fear not. Fear not. Fear not. And I'm not just saying it. Because it's a nice thing to say. I'm saying to you, fear not, because I know who is going to be with you in that year, through every task, through every trial, through every challenge, through every battle. God is with you. Amen? God is with you. Listen, tap the person next to you and say, wake up, fear not. God's going to be with you. And if you forget everything that I've spoken about and preached about, about the different things that you need to be aware of, listen, just remember this. Just walk with the awareness of this reality. He will never leave you nor forsake you. And He is going to be with you every step of the way even as you enter into this new decade. And because He is with you, there's nothing that you're going to face that's going to overwhelm you. There's nothing that you're going to face that together you and God cannot overcome. Fear not, for I am with you, says the Lord. Amen? It's going to be a great year. That's reason enough for me to be positive about 2020. Bring it on. I'm ready. For greater is He who is in me than he that is in the world. I'm ready because I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. I'm ready because God is with me. Amen. Come on, let's stand. Fear not, for I am with you, says the Lord. You know, I just want to come against the spirit of fear. You know, one of the things that we feel the most as we're about to step into a new year is fear. Everything that we read and uh, every news that we watch, every survey seems to be designed to release a spirit of fear over people. But we live by a different reality. Like I said, Isaac sowed in the land in a time of famine and God blessed him there. You have God who is with you. And because God is with you, you don't have to fear. You need to meditate on that until it becomes a revelation in your life. Until fear goes. Amen? Fear has to leave. Fear and faith cannot coexist. It's hard. Fear has to leave. God is with you and God didn't bring you this far to the last 
hour of 2019 so that he can abandon you just before you step into 2020. He brought you this far because he's going to take you further. In fact, it is his faithfulness that brought you this far in life. Come on, think about moments of your life. Some of you shouldn't even be here. But it's because of his faithfulness. Some of you 